So I want to talk about actually going beyond high performance. And in high performance, there's a pyramid. I'll call it majority of many, few, and the 1%. Everybody in this room already knows this. You're already at the top of this pyramid. Whether you want to call it market share, 38%. Whether you want to call it 65% of federal. How about 10 to 10 of the top federal agencies? There's so many metrics you can point to that you're at the top. And I do get the real privilege to work with teams and organizations like yourself all around the world. I was just asked backstage, you know, how many, how many talks do I give a, a year? I give over 100. And then we start working deeply with certain companies in, in the application piece, and they operationalize it. I've spoken to over 1,000 companies in the last decade alone. And you all know how fast things are changing, the speed of change. Actually, what I want to talk about is how you lead through change, because you get to see this just like you. When you work in, whether it's in technology or most of your customers, whether it's in financial services, in the banking industry, in manufacturing, the best global sports teams around the world, I get to work with them. And what you get to see is there's certain threads. I call it the red thread that goes through every single organization. And it's exactly what you're all experiencing right now. So that's what the best do. But here's the question. How do you go beyond that? What happens in the one-tenth of one-tenth of one percent? So you're already in the major leagues. We got playoff seasons here. You know, you're already the pros. But here's the question. How do you become all pro? How do you actually become Hall of Fame? Because that's where your opportunity lies, both as an organization and as an individual. So this right here, this represents not the one percent. This represents one-tenth, one-tenth, one percent of all the pilots in the world. Hundreds of thousands of pilots, tens of thousands of tactical jet pilots. Only six of us ever got to wear this helmet. Here's what's interesting. Three of us were new every year. Pilots, to me, are like the sales team. We're out there pointy end. But the Blue Angels are not just sales, not just the pilots. 120 individuals, just like you, all the support that's in this room. The sales support, the product support, the marketing, all the people that are making this happen. So on my team, I had a 33% rotation rate of all my key players. Actually, everyone in the company. And you might want to say, well, wait a minute, why is that? Well, number one, we have to adapt, just like you, to market conditions. My market was the Navy. Navy says every three years you get reassigned. So we're in a constant state of growth. We're in a constant state of learning. Sounds a lot like you right now. Whether you're growing and learning, you're constantly bringing in all the new people that are in this room today. It's powerful, right? So how do you do that at an elite high level? Year in, year in, year in, year in. I think you do it with a culture. And that's what I think this helmet really represents is a culture. It's a culture of excellence and also a culture of caring. And I think you need both. Hey, tell me, is that what your day looks like? Actually, I bet it does in some ways. Stuff coming at you all different directions. Okay, anybody got a little distractions going on in their life, right? Okay, uh, so there's a lot of change, all right? Uh, so here's the concept that I'm, I want to give you. I want to give you a tool. I'm going to call it a center point. And what's the center point? Center point is going to be the single point of reference we're going to make decisions off of. So this is a decision-making tool. Now, if you look in this picture, you'd say, well, where's the center point? It's actually not in the picture, but it'd be below those three jets in a line. You'd see a tractor, trailer, truck over land. You'd see a boat over water. Again, it's this defined center point we're going to make decisions off of. We're actually off right here. This is what it looks like when you align the stack. Okay, that only happens about once every eh, two weeks. Why? Try coming at each other at 1,000 miles per hour closure. If you're one second off, you miss by two football fields. A little bit of precision, right? Uh, you know, so when you think about all the things that you're trying to pull together in a day, communication, coordination, all right, same thing, okay, same thing. So here's the tool that I would use with my next customer meeting. Heck, you can use it today in one of your side discussions. Uh, when you're discussing some, with somebody and you're trying to get alignment, ask them one simple question. Say, what's our center point? Or more importantly, what's your center point if, if it's a customer? It's a partnership. Say, what's our center point? All right, and then listen. See what they say. See, the power of the question is actually not the answer. The power of the question is, do you get the same answer? But there's other ways to create these, these contracts of high trust. Uh, I'll give you an example first, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. So we had a maneuver we called the knife edge pass. What's that? 
Uh, well, it's, the maneuver is going to be these two jets are going to come at each other. So again, I'm building the model here, right? So that's the third one, is, is, is connecting through high trust contracts. But there's, uh, we got about 30 maneuvers in an air show. So just to give you an idea of your day. You know how all the things you have to do. So one of them is what we call uh, the knife edge pass. And this is where Thumper and I are gonna come at each other at 1,000 miles per hour closer, cross within a wingspan. If we're one second off, we're gonna miss by two football fields. So how do you execute at that level? Well, of course we had a plan. And of course we've had standards, but now you're airborne. So this is one maneuver where I'm three miles crowd left, Thumper's three miles crowd right, we're six miles apart, we're virtual. I've got my four other teammates five miles over here. Just like you, I'm coordinating, lots of different things going on. So I'm listening from my boss. As my boss says a certain word, I realize I've got 45 seconds to get my two jets over center point, I have to de-conflict. I know it's gonna take me 40. So I come up on the radio and I say, Thumper, are you ready to take a mark? The reason I ask him or her is I can't see them. So I gotta make sure they're in position. So we had a contract, they could say no. If they were out of position, they could say no. 99 times out of 100, Thumper was there. But the one time he wasn't, I needed to know. So our contract was okay, you're not in position, you got five seconds. Five seconds, I'm gonna ask you again. He was always ready the second time. I'd say, stand by, mark it, boom, we hit our stopwatches. Next contract was 20 seconds. 20 seconds, I want you on your three mile checkpoint, on altitude, on airspeed, on time. Guess what? Play a coach agreement, I'll do the same thing. You can count on me. At 20 seconds, if he was on altitude, on airspeed, on time, guess what he told me? Nothing. You wanna decrease your voicemails and emails? Put this into place. If you're where you're supposed to be, I don't need to hear from you. But if, if you're off, I need to know, I need to know quickly. Why? So we can adjust. So anybody know what an F-18 looks like? Nose on, two miles out, it's a dot. This dot's getting bigger at the rate of a mile every four and a half seconds. I remember looking out there, sometimes I see his nose cannon in, I'd go, dude, we got a problem. If there's gonna be an impact point, it's not gonna be pretty. And then I needed to trust my wingman to do what he or she said they're gonna do, they needed to trust me. See, here is my verbal contract to Thumper. I'll be on the flight line. I won't be five foot left or five foot right, I'll be right on the flight line. I'll set the altitude, I'll make the timing correction. I'll give you the command to execute a full stick deflection roll. You, my teammate, have one job. Miss me. <laughs> Biggest game of chicken you ever played. It wasn't a game and it wasn't chicken. So there's, there's always this gap. So the real question is, how do you close the gap? And how do you close it quickly? So I wanna share with you now, is not only a process and a mindset, but a vehicle that allow you to close performance gaps faster than anything else. That's a pretty bold statement. You might always say, wait a minute, where's this come from, right? It actually comes from my post-Navy career. After the uh, Blue Angels, I did some leadership roles, and, and then I, I wanted to reinvent myself. We all, I think, all reinvent ourselves all the time. In fact, actually, you need to reinvent yourself every seven years, and your body's already doing it. Every single cell in your body will be reinvented within seven years, including your bones. So this natural change process is actually part of your own DNA. But here, up here, is how do we do it? So for me, I needed help, went to school, uh, went to Stanford Business School, ended up getting three master's degrees, worked in venture capital. I'm a VC in Silicon Valley, right around 2000, 2001. Anybody remember what happened then? Yeah, the bubble, they call it the bubble, and it did burst. And I remember sitting around the table that time frame and, a, and, and wondering, what are we gonna do? I mean, things were, things were coming apart, right? And I remember a thought hit my head, how come? Now my thought was not how come the bubble burst, here was my question. How come some people outperform others and some don't? How come some teams, some organizations, some collision repair facilities outperform others and some don't? I started thinking about that. And I started to go back in my life, say wait a minute, when was I part of an organization and not only did this, did it every year with new people under changing conditions? It was partly when I was a Blue Angel but it was in many other organizations that I've learned from. And I realized, you know, on the blues, here's what we did. We had a product, we had a service just like you do. I had to overlay those products and services on many different people. Of course, sometimes the weather's good, sometimes the weather's bad. I had to adapt to change, sometimes over water, sometimes over land. So you have to adapt and you have to lead, right? So I'm thinking about this and I'd say, wait a minute, I know how it worked there, but how can we make that work in the business world? 
because not everything transfers directly. There's some real subtleties we need to know. And so fortunately for the last decade, over a decade, I've had the rare privilege to work with over a thousand organizations. And some of them we actually go deeper in. It's only about one in 10 that actually can take this message and go deeper. But as we did that, or that choose to, because everybody can, but that choose to, and I started to see the red thread, that common thread that goes through all high performance. And I started to say, wow, what if we could capture this and take this to the world? And there is a process to it, and we'll go through the framework, but more importantly, there's a mindset. And that, I think, is the differentiator. And it's a mindset of gratitude. It's a mindset of gratefulness. It's what I call glad to be here mindset, and uh, we'll see how that ties in. Because you need both, two sides to the same coin, operational excellence and a glad to be here mindset. You bridge those, you got real power. I like to wake up happy. Anybody in this room besides me like to wake up happy? Okay, so here's the question, do you? After last night, by the way, I stopped by and saw that. It looked like a lot of you were having fun. But here's the question, okay? Do you wake up happy every single day? See, it turns out you can actually train the human brain to wake up happy. There's, there's lots of techniques. All right, I'll give you one real quick. They've done a lot of studies. Uh, but it turns out the neuroplasticity of your brain, the number one quality of, of, of people who self-assess themselves as happy is gratitude. Turns out gratefulness is the number one quality. So when I learned that, studies, you can read all this stuff, I said, okay, well, I'm going to do what I call my glad to be here wake up. What's my glad to be here wake up? Every time I get up in the morning, very first thing I do is I say, what am I grateful for? Today was easy because I woke up, of course, in this beautiful hotel. My thought was you all. First thought that hit me was you. I said, you know, later on in the morning, I'm going to get the rare privilege to share some information with people and an organization that has the power to impact other people's lives. That's a privilege. Thank you for that. And, uh, and then I started thinking about, well, okay, I'm healthy. I'm strong. I feel good today. I mean, here's, here's the thing. It doesn't matter. Just go over in your mind very quickly, what are you grateful for? Then go back in your day. I go back 24 hours because I do this every single day. You can go back as far as you want. Initially, it's kind of fun to go back to the, the people who have made great impacts into your life. Your teachers, your trainers, your parents, people who have helped you, right? And you just remember that. Then you go forward in your day. This is real important in sales and leadership. Think about others, not just yourself. I do use my schedule, but I'm thinking about others. Say, boy, I hope Shane's talk went great this morning. I hope Paul talks goes great this morning. They did. I thought this whole event is amazing, by the way. It's kind of cool, right? And so, and you think about others, not just yourself. You do that. It takes uh, about 40 to 65 times. We don't really know. You will cut grooves in the brain. Neuroplasticity of your brain will change. You'll have more conscious, happy thoughts. Don't believe me. Try it. See if it works for you.